please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, uh, besides the index, there are a lot of stocks which are moving. So, Symphony has recovered from the day's low. So, it's still down around 15 odd percent reacting to its numbers from yesterday. But nonetheless, even something like a Hexaware, uh, where it's, uh, you know, now down around 8 odd percent for that particular stock as well, where margins did miss estimates. So, you can see the kind of pressure which is emerging in terms of specific stocks. Other uh, usual sub suspects in the broader markets include something like a PC Jewelers, which is currently down around 4 odd percent. But um, as we wait for the markets to scale new highs, that is for the Nifty in particular, Prashant is joining in with an analysis of how exactly all of the Nifty stocks have done at current reckoning, which ones have really led the way and which ones have a long way to go at this point. Prashant, over to you. You know, you could uh, complain that I'm pouring cold water even though the Nifty has not even made its uh, life high. Uh, but at some point it will. I mean, it's a matter of uh, time. We are, what, 40, 30, 40 odd points away from the 1117 mark, the life high. Uh, so it's going to happen. Well, but when it happens, I mean, these numbers will not change very much. Maybe, you know, one stock here or there. Uh, it's interesting to look at the Nifty 50 stocks themselves. The index is making an all-time high, but what's happening as far as those 50 stocks are concerned. So let's just break it up, right? Uh, there are 12 stocks out of the 50 stocks which are at or within 5% of their life highs. Uh, I mean, you know, there are stocks today, for example, which are uh, making a fresh high, fresh life high. There are stocks which are 2% away from uh, their life high. Uh, all the way, I mean, so basically 12 stocks at or within 5% of their respective lifetime highs. That's point number one. There are nine stocks which are between 6 and 15% away from their uh, respective life highs. Uh, so, you know, it is, again, it's a distance that could be covered. The markets stay buoyant. I mean, it's not that big a distance. The worry, though, are the next two categories. There are 16 nifty stocks, one six. Uh, which are between 15 and 30 percent away from their respective life highs. Okay, so the 16 nifty stocks. And then there are 13 nifty stocks, and this is, I mean, essentially the widest gap that I'm talking about out of all the categories. 13 nifty stocks which are over 40 percent away. So this essentially is between 40 and 62 percent away from their life highs. 13 stocks fall in that category. So the last two categories, which is 16 and 13 stocks, that 29 stocks, that's about what? Almost 60 percent of the Nifty 50 constituents, which are between 50 and, you know, over 40 percent away from their life highs. So, I mean, that's essentially in numbers. Let's just break, that, break this down in percentages, and I think maybe it, it becomes easier to comprehend, right? This is what I'm talking about. 58 percent of the Nifty stocks are between 15 and 62 percent away from their life highs. There are only, uh, you know, there are only uh, 20, uh, only 24 percent of the Nifty stocks, of the Nifty 50 constituents are within, are at or within 5 percent of their uh, life high. So I think, I mean, you know, it kind of sort of just puts in perspective that, well, we talk about the Nifty, we celebrate an all-time new high on uh, benchmark indices, absolutely fine. I mean, I think uh, should be done, but also maybe a word for the constituents which themselves don't pay, uh, paint such a pretty picture after all. Uh, the number for me is that 58% number, which is between 15 and 62% away from their respective highs. I mean, I think uh, uh, now we come to stocks, and I think the stocks are well known. Which are the stocks which are at or within life highs? Well, the numbers are, the stocks are on your screen. There is the Bajaj twins, there is the HDFC twins, which is HDFC and HDFC Bank. There is uh, Infosys, there is uh, TCS, there is Reliance, there is Asian Paints, Maruti, Yes Bank, Mahindra and Mahindra. The other list actually, uh, these are stocks which get uh, discussed ad nauseum. This is the list which I think people don't pay too much attention to. And this is the list of stocks which are over 40, between 40 and 62 percent away from their life highs. Look at the names. I mean, you got, uh, of course, a mention for a couple of pharma names, Lupin, Dr. Reddy's for sure. There is Sun there as well. But there is ONGC, there is Wipro, there is NTPC, there is Tata Motors, there is Vedanta and a bunch of, uh, uh, and, and a bunch more. So. I think uh, disaggregated uh, sort of analysis of the 50 stocks uh, does sort of, you know, pour a little bit of cold water uh, on uh, what would be, of course, uh, 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 you know, an achievement for the Nifty Index itself when it does get to its life high, which, as I said, uh, I would reckon would be a matter of time. Back to you, Victor.
Yes, absolutely, Prashant. And uh, the mid-cap index, lest we forget, is 15% away from its all-time high. So while it has gained around 4% on a week-to-date basis or 2% on a week-to-date basis, it still has a lot of work to do to get back to those levels of over 21,000 when you're talking about all-time highs on the mid-cap index. But to talk about the markets now, we have Ashwini Gujral joining in to discuss the technicals. Ashwini, over to you. Uh, what have you made for of uh, today's trade? There was a lot of enthusiasm that maybe today could be the day that the Nifty uh, rescales back to its all-time highs. But that hasn't happened. It's consolidating. But the mid-cap index is continuing to marginally outperform. Does that give you any sort of um, confidence? First, let me address Prashant's concern. In our country, we throw out underperformers and we bring back... Uh, you know, bring in out performers from, you know, non-index companies. So anybody who does not perform is likely on its way out and the performers will come in and they will take Nifty to fresh highs. So that is a system that works well in taking indices higher. Now, having said that, uh, see, it's a day of a pause and uh, a pause which should be bought. So uh, today, Mid-caps have given up almost 140 points in terms of Nifty Junior. Mm. But uh, there is some buying in large caps. So my sense is that as we go into the close, uh, some of the large caps uh, may start uh, getting bought into. Uh, interestingly, you know, one stock, Kotak Mahindra, is now more than 100 points off its highs. So somewhere, you know, uh, people who are interested in those sort of stocks to try to get into Kotak Mahindra, it's been a big fall and uh, at some point uh, buying should come back there. Uh, on other stocks, I think uh, HDFC is a buy with a stop of 1980, target of 2045. GSPL is a buy with a stop of 202, target of uh, 214. And uh, Jubilant Food is a buy with a stop of 1450, target of 1510. Ashwini, uh, just to go back to that point, the elegant solution that you proposed, <laughs> and it actually is true. <laughs> but, uh, so, if you were to, uh, if I were to ask you which are the stocks, we know which could go out, right? The big underperformers. But outperformers, I mean, the really big outperformers which deserve to come into the Nifty, do we have enough replacement candidates? Because it's not as if the broader market is doing very well. See, there are things which can uh, which are at all time highs which can always be uh, brought in uh, you know some of the agri stocks like escorts etc so uh, there are you can find five or six stocks what will happen is things like you know tata motors and everything that's uh, all time low jpl states used to be a index stock hmm. so the f more frequently you keep changing the index and you know uh, the a piece which is not performing keeps getting thrown out. Same with Nifty Junior. Why is ETF such a great product? Because there is a lot of, you know, fund management being done by the exchange. <laughs> That's true. In fact, uh, I remember Aurobindo has been kicked out of the Nifty and uh, you mentioned that all of the pharmaceutical stocks have underperformed. So let's see what happens to a couple of them which are actually three to four companies within the pharmaceutical stocks which are a part of the nifty but nonetheless ashwini uh, time for some twitter queries now uh, we have prashant who holds 300 shares of heidelberg at 145 one rupees since the past two years should he hold or sell that stock see it hasn't given great return cement overall hasn't done much similar price range you should try to get into lnt finance and holding on declines and that will probably work much better for him Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, Ashwini, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining in. We speak again in an hour's time. That is 12.30. You'll hear from Ashwini again. Uh, there is some uh, news at the bottom of the screen. This is Maran, uh, the uh, Madras High Court, which has set aside an order for... Uh, for the BSNL okay, uh, uh, case. It's, uh, it's ordered the framing of charges against the Maran brothers. So mm -hmm. I think that kind of is uh, a better way to put it. Uh, so the High Court has uh, uh, said that frame charges, and this is the... 
the the telephone exchange case, right? Take yeah, the, the BSNL which, case. Yeah. So I think there's no relief which is actually come in for the Maran brothers. It's a bit of a setback which has come through from there for them from the Madras High Court where they've mm. set aside an order for discharging them. Mm. Plus, uh, I think it all also orders framing of charges against the Maran brothers. So that's the news that we're picking up at this point. Yeah, uh, so maybe we can put up Sun TV. Uh, anything mm. about the Maran brothers and, uh, you know, that stock does uh, react sometimes mildly, sometimes sharply. It's down about two and a quarter percent, 770. So, yes, I mean, I think it has sold off uh, on the back of the news, which has uh, come in, seeing a small uptick. I think in terms of the value uh, of the alleged uh, sort of damage as a result of uh, this telephone exchange i mean out of all the charges there are three of there are three uh, three odd cases if i remember correctly in terms of value this the telephone exchange case uh, okay. is 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 the smallest in value but i mean nevertheless it's uh, it's trouble for Maran Brothers in that sense. Absolutely. We've got uh, numbers, though, uh, from TTK, Ekta, if you want to take them. Yes, I just want to pull up the poll uh, because the profit has fallen around 73% on a year-on-year -year basis. And uh, we did not have uh, any expectations in terms of the profit figure at this point in time. Uh, HDFC Securities was expecting a revenue growth of around 17 odd percent, margins of around 13.7 percent, but there wasn't much said about uh, the profit bit. Maybe there was an exceptional game same time last year, so that's probably one of the reasons. So we're just going to wait by to get a few more details with regards to, say, the top line as well as in terms of the EBITDA performance this time. So uh, just to reiterate, Yes, they had an exceptional item of 129 crores in Q1 FI18. So that's the kind of huge exceptional uh, profit loss that you're seeing or profit drop that you're seeing for TTK Prestige on a year on year basis. So the drop EBITDA of around 73%. Would be yeah. a better reflection. Exactly. That's uh, the margins as well as the revenue figure would probably be more important to watch out for for TTK Prestige. You can see that the stock has recovered after that initial little bit of a dip that's come through. Revenue is up 17%, so not bad, largely in line with what, uh, in terms of the percentage growth at least, that the street was working with. So they've come in a little over 415 odd crores. Maybe that should come back up for you. HDFC was estimating around 424 crores in terms of the top line. We'll wait by for the margins, which are expected to come in at around 13 to 14 odd percent. So let's see what they deliver. So 17% growth on the top line at 419 odd crores. So that you can see is uh, just about in line with estimates and the EBITDA margin is what we're still waiting by. So the net profit figure includes that sort of exceptional of around 120 crores plus 129 crores same time last year. We had uh, Mr. Jagannathan, by the way, with us uh, on our show just I think what a fortnight back, a little over a fortnight back and he sounded uh, uh, extremely bullish about prospects for the company said the underlying recovery uh, mm. is he can see the underlying recovery and the momentum picking up across uh, product categories and uh, also the fact that uh, their venture into new ent uh, sort of new segments uh, is also uh, doing pretty well so it's a well managed company absolutely no doubt and the uh, stock is recovering, recovering. also, yeah. yeah, the stock is recovering. So we'll do one thing, uh, we'll take a break right now, but then we'll come back with the margin picture for TTK Prestige, as well as get you a little more of an analysis on that particular stock. It's recovered from the day's low after the clarification with regards to the bottom line and also the EBITDA has come in around 55.5 crores. That's a 24% growth. Uh, the HDFC was expecting around 58 odd crores in terms of the EBITDA this time. Or, uh, you so, know, it's an experiment and one day call it off. No, no, no. I, let me first of all say, let me break them up into two. I think Colors Tamil, first of all, is a new entry, which happened towards the end of last quarter. Okay. It is one of the more successful launches in recent time because it crossed 100 GVM. And it has notched up a 5% share in two to three months. We have strong competitors there, but exactly. we are focused on that market. We will continue to grow it. It's a large market. And I think our journey has started very well. Okay. I think on Bangla, we continue to work on, and we've got to, it's a duopoly in that market, but we are confident that with what the work which we are doing, there is a lot you will see. Very recently, actually, on 16th of July, we've launched Khan Banega Karolpati in Bangla as well. Okay. So there's a lot of work which we are doing. We are invested in the regional space. Regional has been a star performer for the quarter and has huge potential overall. I don't, I I, 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 I don't take away from overall regional, but one or two regions like uh, Tamil and uh, uh, Bangla and Oriya, I guess, uh, it's a long, long haul. Okay, now let me come to the digital piece. Uh, Rahul, you see it as a threat or you see it as an opportunity? I mean, uh, will, uh, when is the money making? Now, of course, I'm treading into Network 18 numbers, 
but uh, is it beginning no, I, to pay I for itself? See it as a, I clearly see it as an opportunity. I think our linear business is doing well. And our digital last year clocked 22% growth, full year basis. I think this revenues. quarter, revenues. This quarter we've grown revenues 22%. And if you look at our, uh, you know, four, uh, we, have, we have got money control, we have first post, we have News 18. News 18 in May in Comscore is a number two site that we have. It is a two-year-old brand. Uh, so news18.com has done exceptionally well. Uh, if you look at uh, money control, uh, in the last one year it has, you know, the, on, on, on mobile, you know, on, on our app, the traffic has gone up three times. It's again grown more than 20%. Uh, I think first post is, uh, you know, now today the number fourth uh, general news destination in the country. So we have two in the top four, you know, news18.com and first post. I think we are prepared better than anyone else. Uh, you know, watch out this year. We have two big high-profile launches coming up in this space. Okay. So I think we are, we are really well prepared on the digital side. You know, we might even partner Woot. Uh, you know, on their OTT uh, platform, so our, our news could go on Woot. Uh, that, that definitely yeah. is catching up, entertainment apps for sure. So tell us, give, give us some colors about Woot. <laughs> <laughs> so the progress there has been very good. First of all, from the, on a revenue front, or albeit on a small base, on ad revenue front, we are doubling quarter on quarter. So I think that's fantastic news. But more importantly for me, the gross downloads now, Lata, are over 90 million. We are, we are approaching the three-digit mark. And monthly actives are in the region of about 35 million. And, and very, very importantly, like I told you earlier as well, we are the number one app when it comes to time spent by user per day amongst all premium OTTs. That hovers at around 45 minutes. So our overall performance on digital is good. We are continuing to be bullish on this. As I've said earlier, we are prepared for the digital world. We want to be you know, platform screen agnostic, pipe agnostic. And, and finally, as Rahul was saying, even in entertainment, towards the second half of this year, we are going to expand portfolio. You can look at launches coming up. Deepak Jasani, head of retail research at HDFC Securities, joins in to discuss the fundamentals of the market. Deepak, hi. Thanks very much uh, for joining in today. Well, let's start by your view on this entire consumption theme that is playing out. Symphony is actually disappointed post numbers um, which were released yesterday. What's your sense in terms of how you would approach a stock such as that? Good morning. Uh, yeah, so uh, we, uh, FMCG has been one of our preferred sectors over some time now. Uh, the rationale has been that uh, uh, the urban and rural consumption both has been have been seeing some sort of a growth, continued growth. Uh, the MSP, the monsoon, uh, etc. will have their own impact on the consumption across the uh, country. So that has been uh, uh, our theme, our rationale for being bullish. Now the early results uh, which came out of the FMCG pack uh, did show a lot of uh, uh, promise. Uh, the promises or the expectations were fulfilled. Uh, over the last couple of days uh, there has been some disappointment. Uh, now, mind well, uh, the last year uh, Q1 had the impact of uh, GST destocking. So, in that sense, uh, I don't know. Uh, this time around, uh, it will all depend a lot on the individual companies, uh, how they have sort of uh, done their uh, strategies in the last year on year quarter, and vis a vis that this quarter, how it has behaved. Uh, but broadly, I think some pockets of consumption has seen increased competition, and including from imports. So we will have to be a little careful about which stocks uh, we are bullish on and uh, accordingly take a stand. Mm -hmm. uh, right, Deepak, uh, the other name uh, is Bajaj Auto, which is uh, lost quite a bit. High was 3,400, it uh, fell uh, quite significantly to what, 26, 20, uh, 50 or so. Uh, HDFC, the institutional side, uh, they, they seem to believe that the volume, I mean, the, they, they came out with a report uh, titled, the, vol the volume chase may help. I just wanted your sense. I mean, the general uh, belief is that this is going to hurt. And uh, we've seen downgrades across the board coming in uh, because of that. Do you have a different view on Bajaj and uh, what they are said they're going to do? Yeah, as far as Bajaj is concerned, I think the management came yesterday and clarified about a lot of things. So, so what they have been saying is they will get aggressive in terms of pricing in the lower end of uh, motorcycles, and they want a bigger, uh, they they want to capture a bigger market share in that segment. Uh, so, as far as the uh, mid and the high end uh, bikes are concerned, they are not going to sort of uh, do aggressive price cuts, and uh, so the, the majority of the margins would come from there and from the three wheeler and export business, where I think. Uh, their profitability and their revenue visibility continues to be as good as earlier. 
the only uh, issue currently the street has is with the uh, the low end uh, the entry level motorcycles uh, so the our institutional team uh, uh, seems to believe that uh, this is going to be a temporary phenomena and once the market share uh, expansion is in place then probably uh, they will come back to the uh, normal uh, margin levels uh, so that is uh, their feeling and i think uh, uh, we will go by that mm -hmm. okay uh, in terms of the broader markets, uh, there's even Hexaware, which is actually down 8% post numbers. Would you have a view on a couple of these mid-cap IT stocks at all? Now, uh, mid-cap IT uh, had uh, a couple of quarters back become more expensive uh, than the large caps, uh, mainly because of the niche areas they operated in and the early sort of advantage, early more advantage that they had vis-a-vis uh, -vis the large caps. So now that advantage uh, is probably they are losing out uh, lately, uh, except in a few cases, the larger companies have uh, put their house in order and now uh, as uh, the numbers of TCS show, uh, in the new areas, the emerging areas, they have uh, done a lot of work. Uh, so the higher valuations with the mid-cap IT companies had a few quarters back, I think will they will have to come back to uh, normal. Uh, whereas the uh, the large cap ITs, I think, will uh, see a re-rating. I have already seen some sort of a re-rating upwards and may see a little more re-rating uh, as far as the valuations are concerned. 